so what exactly it, uh, is casing but that's an essential part of casing that is not always discussed usually okay so so the topic is cash invalidation lastly let's talk about cash eviction policies let's say some one user comes and search for hot dogs and we might randomly remove burger from the cash hey everyone welcome back to the channel so today we are diving into a crucial concept in the world of distributed systems and high performance applications and the topic is casing okay we'll go through what casing is and explore different types of caches and then discuss two often overlooked yet essential topics cache invalidation and cache eviction policies okay so if you are a developer or tech enthusiast or just someone looking to understand the backbone of modern software architecture then this is the video for you so let's get started let's uh, start things off with the basics first so what exactly it, uh, is caching so caching is a technique that stores frequently accessed data in a uh, temporary high speed data storage layer so the goal is simple okay to reduce the time it takes to access the data and consequently improve the ap application performance so imagine you are browsing a uh, online shopping website and you repeatedly view the same images of a product so instead of downloading these images every time uh, from a database what we can do we can cache the cache these images okay so a cache saves them locally so that they load almost instantly next time you visit them okay so data in a cache is typically uh, stored in a key value pair structure uh, think of it like a dictionary okay uh, where each piece of data known as value is associated with a unique key that is a distinct identifier so when an application requests data it checks the cache using this key okay if the data is in the cache it is known as cache hit uh, and it's quickly retrieved and served to the user if it is not present then it is known as cache miss okay uh, so cache miss occurs and the system fetches the data from the original source now okay and then it can add it to the cache for future request okay so that's how the cache flow works okay so this simple key value approach makes caching access very fast and efficient especially for frequently accessed data so that's about the basics of caching and how it works okay so in simple terms caching helps us to avoid unnecessary computation or data retrievals or data requests that we do to the database so which will speed up our application and it's particularly crucial in large scale application where every microsecond counts okay okay let me just change the slide now now let's just uh, discuss about different types of caches okay as yes, there is not a one size fits all approach right so we need to have different types of caching the first we have is the client side cache okay so the, uh, this is a type of a cache that is stored in the user's device okay typically within the browser so when you visit a website the browser downloads assets like images style sheets and javascript files right and then the browser then stores these uh, assets locally so when you visit revisit the page later it doesn't need to fetch everything again so the next type of uh, cache is the server side cache which is usually managed on the server where application or data is hosted so server caches can be divided into two types uh, two categories further so in memory cache and disk based uh, disk based cache so in memory cache such as redis or uh, or memcached are ultra fast and highly efficient uh, cache storage okay so they keep the data in the ram that is random access memory making it accessible in milliseconds but they come at a cost because ram ram is expensive right and it has a limited space so that's what uh, about in memory cache and there is another type of uh, server side cache that is known as disk based cache so as the name suggests in this based caching uses the server's hard drive okay it's lower than in memory cache right like redis and memcached but it store it can store larger amounts of data at a lower cost so systems like ssd backed uh, databases or even cdn often use disk based storage well the third type of uh, uh, caching technique is the distributed cache so which are designed to work across multiple servers so in a distributed systems one server's cache might not be enough so systems like cassandra and elastic search etc use distributed caching to ensure that the cache data is accessible across multi multiple servers which helps in improving scalability and performance all right so the next fourth type of caching is the cdn so a cdn is a network of servers distributed globally to store copies of static assets like images then javascript files videos and files etc so cdn caching is essential for content heavy websites like netflix uh, hotstar prime video etc or services that cater to a global audience okay as it delivers data from the server that is closest to the user cdn is important in that aspect so basically i mean the data will be served to you from the nearest available cache server and that's how cdn works now let me just change the slide okay so now we know about 
or what casing is and the different type of uh, different types of cas but there's an essential part of casing that is not always discussed usually okay so so the topic is cas invalidation so cas invalidation is the process of removing or updating data that has become outdated or stale which you don't need if the data is present in the case we have to remove that right that's the that's the meaning of cas invalidation so imagine a scenario where a user updates their profile picture if the cache data still has the older image you will still be seeing the older image right so in this cases cache invalidation comes into picture and there are some strategies to implement cache invalidation so the first one is the time to live or in short ttl with ttl cache data is set to expire after a certain period okay so once it expires the cache will fetch fresh data from the main source so this is simple yet effective approach uh, for many use cases so after a certain period of time the data from the cache is removed or it is cleaned so the next type of cache invalidation method is the write through mechanism so in a write through cache what that, what happens when a data is written or updated in the main database as you can see in this graph when data is updated in the main database it is also updated in the cache server immediately okay however in the other technique in the right behind cache changes are written to the cache first okay then periodically they will be synced in the main database it is not immediately synced to the main database but they will be periodically synced to with the main database so the fourth technique of, technique of cache invalidation is cache busting so this is more common in web applications so cache busting uses a versioning technique by appending a unique identifier uh, such as a version number or timestamp against the url that you are accessing let's say you are accessing a product image and uh, after few days the image of the product was updated by the server so what the server will do it will add a you know some kind of versioning uh, counter or timestamp in the url so next time when you will access the image when you will uh, search for the product and access the product page the system will freshly fetch the image of the product again because the urls of the asset has changed or the url of the image has changed so when the file changes the unique identifier changes obviously forcing the cache to fetch uh, the fresh and latest data from the from the server so that's how the cache busting techniques works in invalidating the cache storage now let's just change the slide lastly let's talk about cache eviction policies so when a cache reaches its maximum storage capacity uh, let's say here the size of the cache is 4 so when the cache reaches its maximum storage capacity it needs some strategy to decide which data to remove so that new items can be accommodated in the cache storage because cache cache storage is limited right we cannot have unlimited cache storage so there are some common techniques of cache eviction policies so cache eviction policies focuses about that so the few common cache eviction policies are uh, least recently used lru least frequently used lfu fifo first in first out and the random eviction policy now let's just first talk about the lru or the least recently used technique first so lru is one of the most widely used eviction policies so how how does it work now it removes the data that has not been accessed in the longest time or it, it was accessed long long back okay it is not the most recent accessed item so the idea is that if you have not used it recently you are unlikely to need it soon so it will be removed from the case now let's understand with an example how it works okay let's say we have a food delivery app where we have this food products available let's say user comes and searches for the sandwiches first okay so what will happen the sandwich will go and sit at the recent position so this is the recent position and this is the oldest position in the cache memory so the sandwich will sit at the recent more recent most position of the cache now let's say uh, some user comes and searches for donuts so what will happen now donut will sit in the recent most position and the sandwich will come to this position donut is uh, placed here now let's say someone comes and searches for pizza now the same process will occur recent most search item is pizza pizza goes and sits here let's say someone comes and searches for burgers same process again we take the pizza here and burger is at the recently most access position now now let's say someone comes and searches for donut again so how how will it work so now donut will come out of here it will sit at the most recent position this pro uh, this products will come here burger will come here and donut will sit here so this is our recent most position in the cache so now let's say someone comes and searches for fries but right now the cache is full right we don't have any position to accommodate this so in lru technique it tells that remove that item from the cache which was least recently used what was the least recently used item it was sandwich because it was accessed or searched by an by an user long time back so what we'll do we'll remove it from the cache 
will make uh, the recent position in the cache empty so that the fries can take this place now. Now if someone comes and searches for uh, ice cream, the same thing will happen again. All these items will go here like this and ice cream will go and sit here. So that's how least recently used or LRU technique works. Um, the advantage of LRU is that LRU prioritizes recently accessed items which often leads to better performance for frequently accessed data. So this algorithm is effective in applications where users tend to revisit recent data such as social media feeds. But there are some disadvantages of LRU also. LRU can be memory intensive because it needs to track the order of uses for each item, right? So we might need to store timestamp of uh, each item that was accessed last. So it may lead to some overhead in large scale systems. However, there are some use cases of LRU. So one of the commonly used use cases of LRU is in the web browsers where recently visited websites or assets are cached. So which enables in faster loading when uh, you re revisit that website in a short span of time. So that was about LRU. Now the next technique is about LFU. In LFU, the cache uh, tracks the frequency of the data access and evicts the least frequently accessed data first. This is useful when certain data is accessed often even if not recently. So what will happen along with against each uh, each cache item, we, we maintain a counter, okay? How many times it was accessed? For example, fries was accessed once, donut was accessed 23 times and burgers was accessed 50 times, let's say, okay? Now, now let's say someone comes and search for hot dogs. So what will happen? We'll, we'll remove the item which was least frequently used or the frequency of its access was the minimum among the other items. So here we see the fries was accessed only one time. So as it is the least number of access counts, so we remove that and store hot dogs in that. So this is how least frequently used uh, mechanism works. So LFU is beneficial when some data is consistently popular over time. Okay, as it keeps frequently access items in cache. So it works well in situation where popular data is unlikely to change like news websites for trending articles. There are some disadvantages of LFU also. LFU may keep outdated popular items cached if not combined with time-based expiry. Okay. It's also complex to implement uh, as tracking uses frequency can be resource intensive. We need to maintain a, maintain a counter against each item, right? That can be a bit resource intensive also. However, there is some use cases of LFU. So LFU is suited for uh, CDNs or content delivery networks where high demand videos or assets or a trending video remain cached in the server uh, so that it can be served to the user with the minimal latency. So this is one of the use cases of LFU. Now the next technique is FIFO or fast in fast out. So this is a quite simple cache eviction uh, technique. So with FIFO, the cache evicts the oldest data first. So FIFO is simple and easy to implement, uh, but might not be optimal in all cases. So especially when frequently accessed data is older. For example, how FIFO works, in FIFO we don't need to maintain all these things, counter or anything as such. In FIFO, let's say this was the order of the access. So in FIFO, what will happen? If a new item comes, okay, let's say this was accessed first, then this one, uh, in, then, then after that hot dog was accessed, then uh, donut was accessed, and after that burger was accessed. So in, in FIFO, what will happen? The first in, first out, I mean the first item that was accessed will be removed from the list. These items will be uh, placed like this and sandwich will come here. Again, if someone comes and searches for pizza, hot dog will be removed from the list or from the cache. And these items will make room for pizza and pizza will go and sit here. So this is how FIFO works. Uh, so the advantage of FIFO is that FIFO is simple to implement. As it does not require any tracking frequency or tracking recency or requirement as we had in LRU and LFU respectively. So it works well in use cases where all data entries have an equal likelihood of being accessed. And that means the probability of accessing an item is equal. In those cases we can use FIFO. But some, some of the disadvantages of FIFO is that FIFO can lead to suboptimal caching since it evicts the oldest data. Even if that uh, data might be still relevant, uh, let's say the demand for donut is high. But still, if a new item come, comes, we remove this item from the list. So this way it can be a suboptimal technique, uh, which, which can uh, lead to potential cache misses often. Okay. However, there are some use cases of FIFO. Also. So FIFO can be effective in uh, round robin load balancers, right? Where new requests are cached and old, old ones are cycled out regularly without specific usage patterns. So requests are coming, load balancer will 
process the request one by one in a round robin manner okay, in that scenario uh, fifo can be a useful technique finally there is a uh, another technique called random eviction as the name suggests it's completely random so it randomly removes cache entries to make space for the new data while it may say, seem counterintuitive this policy can be efficient in certain cases where usage patterns are hard to predict where you don't know how the usage is going to be for a given application in those cases a random eviction policy can be a useful tool for example if someone comes and searches for fries i can randomly remove let's say i randomly remove uh, sandwich from here and put the fries in the cache memory so there are some advantages of random eviction technique because random eviction technique is easy to implement and works well when data access patterns are unpredictable as i told some disadvantages are there also in the random eviction algorithm uh, technique so random eviction is less efficient than other policies in stable access patterns because it might it might evict valuable data arbitrarily for example let's say there is a high demand of burgers but uh, let's say some one user comes and searches for hot dogs and we might randomly remove burger from the cache so next time when a user comes and searches for burgers it, we won't find the image in the case so we might have to go to the database again and uh, get the image url of the burger and show it in the app so this is how random eviction can be problematic in uh, in those cases however there are some use cases of random eviction technique also random eviction can be used in as casing for iot devices where data is highly dynamic and access patterns are hard to predict or we can use random eviction technique in testing and simulation environment where we are just testing the capabilities of casing so it can be a useful technique to adopt so yeah that's a wrap on caching so today we covered what caching is the type uh, we looked at the various type of caches explored cache eviction methods and different type of cache invalidation techniques also so caching can drastically improve application performance but it also comes with complexities uh, like uh, invalidation and eviction techniques which we just discussed right now so it needs a careful planning in, in those aspects okay so yeah if you found this video insightful and helpful don't forget to like uh, the video and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more tech content like this so this is our second video on the system design basics playlist okay you can also go go and check out my second playlist on system design where you combine system design concepts with real life use cases and discuss different type of use cases of system designs right so click on the i icon above to explore that playlist so if you got any doubts about whatever we discussed in this video put them in the comment section and i'll be sure to answer so i'm targeting to reach 1800 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting uh, so thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you